The last step is to set up the mesh. And here what we do is we have the option what we call the mesh control option. Basically the mesh control allows you to select parts or faces that you think are critical. So in this case it's going to be our air gaps here. And for those parts we can allow ourselves to go for a very fine mesh. For the rest of the structure, we can go for a coarse mesh and still get speed and precision at the same time. When creating the global mesh, we have three fields here that we need to be worried about. Uh, we start with the bottom one here, 24 here. This is the average number of mesh element per diagonal of each solid. This is the most important one. Basically what it does here, EMS goes over each and every part in your structure, measures the diagonal of this part and then divides it by this number. And that decides the size of your uh, mesh elements. The second element here is the tolerance and here you're basically telling the mesher to what degree, to what point you're willing if there is a situation where you cannot fit the mesh element exactly the size requested, what kind of tolerance does it have so that it, uh, it tries to fit everything within reasonable uh, size. And the first one here is the global size. So basically this one is just an indicator because what it does is EMS will go to the biggest component in your structure, which is in this case the air box, and it would divide it by this number right here. And it just displays it for you there to just give you a ballpark idea of what's going on. Once the meshing is done, this is how your mesh structure should look like. Then after going through all these steps, your model now is ready to be run. So you right click here and hit run. Now this is the end of this series. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact us. You can also visit our website www.emworks.com. Thank you for watching.